what's bothering you in the world of sports. Give Murph a call at 312-644-6767. That's 312-644-6767. And tell him what's beefing you in the world of sports. What's Your Beef is brought to you by Brown's Chicken Sandwiches and Catering. Oh, let me tell you, it's lunchtime. Look at 20 minutes after noon. You haven't had lunch yet. There's a Browns just up ahead on the left. How do I know that? Because there's 50 Browns locations around greater Chicagoland, northwest Indiana. And they now have the Jumbo Buffalo Wings. You know about the great Italian beefs, the great Italian sausage. You know the combos when you put them together. Murph's favorite, you know those. Oh, man, those meatball sandwiches. How about my favorite? Maxwell Street Polish. But I understand from the folks at Browns, the Jumbo Buffalo Wings, you know it. They're flying off the shelves. <laughs> Spicy buffalo, blazing buffalo, teriyaki, chili, garlic, the barbecue beef. But here's the thing. They are large. Bigger wings. Bigger taste. You won't believe the jumbo buffalo wings at Browns. It tastes better. Let's get to the phone line and see what you are beefing about in Chicago. Tommy is first in line from Chicago Heights. Hey, Tom. Hey, Murph. How are you, Tom? I'm doing great. Good, good. Hey, what's your beef? My beef is with highly paid athletes that can't obey stop signs. The stop sign. You would think that these, but you know what, Tom? I, now, I agree with you 100%. We're going to have, if you're still near the radio, at 1 o'clock, Jesse Rogers has an investigative report from Wrigley Field, and we're going to shed some new light on the fact that maybe some Cubs players are not paying attention to Quaddy because they don't maybe trust him. Tom, you are going to go visit my friends at Browns. Can you make it over to Browns, Tommy? Yeah, there's one down the street for me. Oh, beautiful. You know it tastes better. Hang on, I'll hook you up, Tom. Thanks a lot. All right, buddy. Yeah, Jesse Rogers doing his job over at Wrigley Field at 1 o'clock. We'll have that. And between now and 2, a little quickie fantasy football segment for you fantasy football guys and gals out there with our friend John Dietz. Does a great job over at the Daily Herald and a member of the uh, Score Fantasy team here. Let's go to Tom from Schaumburg. Hello, Tom. Hi, Murph. How are you? Tom, I'm fine. I'm hungry for some Browns. What's your beef? Uh, listen, this beef is with some of these Cub players who are not paying attention to the game. Uh, case in point, last night, seventh inning, Fontenot draws a walk. Uh, there was one out before him. I don't know who got it, but there's one out. He draws a walk on five pitches. Got Penny, Penny a little bit, uh, mm-hmm. got a little bit of working going. So Grady Little comes out to talk to him, not to take him out. Right. But he's got the two guys warming up in the pen. He's taking his time talking to him. Yep. All right, they break him up. So Arnold comes out, swings at the second pitch, pops up. Yep. Next guy up, Terrio. Swings at the first pitch, grounds out, inning over. Good night. Now, you know what? You're exactly right. Fought no pinch hit. In the nine hole, in the bottom of the seventh, the Cubs are trailing by three, five to two. He works the walk on short pitches, five. Now, Soriano with runner on, one out, you know, pops up. Now, if he hit the two-run homer, you know, then then we'd say you did the right job. Terrio with two out. I'm not as adverse if you if you see where I'm coming from with two out. You know what? I don't know you're working to walk as much, but the one out. How about this one? And I don't like to uh, often bring up this because it's Jack Jones and people out there think I have an axe to grind. But if you were still with the game in the ninth inning, they were trailing six to two. DeRosa leads off with a, a short uh, count walk also, four or five pitches. And Jack Jones, you know, hit the first pitch into that little double play. They all do it. And why they do it, I have no idea. Tommy, I love it. Hey, you're going to go visit Browns, courtesy of Murph. All right, buddy? Awesome. Thanks, Murph. Oh, it's awesome. It tastes better. All right, now, I'll bet you our guy, our our sales guy, super fan, Dan, is probably pulling into the Browns right now. Danny, no. Oh, he's going to do it again. Just like every time when Fred Flintstone ordered the uh, Baranosaurus sandwich and it tipped his car over. Super fan Danny's going to order that meatball sandwich. Look out, Danny. Bloop. Ah, one of the meatballs fell right onto his $300 silk tie with the marinara sauce. Oh, man, it tastes better. Everyone on hold, stick around. We'll get right back to you. Another round of phone calls. Watch your beef. Visit my friends at Brown's, the Jumbo Buffalo Wings. They're flying off the shelves. 
25 minutes there, nonstop sports talk back in a flash with more. At 1 o'clock, Jesse Rogers, a very, very interesting investigative report. Fantasy football coming up also. Murph, driven to you by ChevyDriveChicago.com. I want to talk to you. Hey, you got some beefs. <laughs> Ah, the best beefs, Browns. It tastes better. Everyone knows. You know the great chicken at Browns. How about this? Honey, it's hot. You're not cooking tonight. Call up your wife right now. I'm bringing home chicken from Browns for dinner as I swing through right now thinking about lunchtime at Browns, an Italian beef, an Italian sausage. President Frank Portillo's favorite, the combo. Put them together. It's a combo. Let's get back to the phone line and see what the fans are beefing about in Chicago. We got uh, North Aurora. Ron is next. Hello, Ron. Hey, Murph. How are you? Fine, Ron. What's your beef? My beef is I'm at this club brass letting Bob Euchre sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game, one of the biggest games of the year, and he throws in real, real, real for the Brewers. Now, let me, Ron, let me ask you this. Did he not, if I'm not mistaken, he's done this in years prior to this. Yeah, but we're finally there, Murph. Oh, no, yeah. no, I know, but I mean, hes it's not like he sprung a surprise on uh, Jay Blanc or John McDonough. He has done this, I believe, in the past, and they allowed him to do it again is what I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, it's just, you know, we had the goat, we had the cat, we had the apartment, and now we got the euchre. Hey, we also got the Zambrano. Yeah, now we got everything going on. <laughs> Sam Brown will run it through the stop sign. Going to be right next to Leon Durham's glove dropping into Gatorade in 84, right? It's all going to be falling apart now because of Euchre. You watch. All right, Ronnie. I appreciate it very much. Look at the fans are beefing, and that's what we're here for. What's your beef? Final couple callers, but lunchtime. You haven't had lunch yet. You know where to go. Browns, 50 locations around Chicago. Lunch at Browns, the Italian beefs, the sausages. Me, I love the Maxwell Street Polish. Grilled onions, yellow mustard for me, please. Look out, Super Fan Dan. Bloop, another big meatball right on the $500 silk tie. Uh, I think I'll get into sales. Wow, they can buy a tie for that. John is in Rolling Meadows. Hello, John. Hey, Murph. I thought he was throwing the ball. John, hey, what's your beef, buddy? My beef is with the Bears fans. Okay, what is that? Now, wait a minute. What if the bear? this season hasn't begun yet, John? My, beer, my beef is from the Bears fans last year. If you look at the situation at the quarterback spot for the Bears, when was the last time that we had a starting quarterback that not only went the entire season, mm-hmm. but got us to the Super Bowl? I mean, the guy is his third season with the Bears, his first full season gets us to the Super Bowl, wins 16 games, and, and they're complaining about, oh, you know what, we got there, we didn't win it. You know what, let's get back there and win it now. He nice. tasted it. Nicely done. Hey, hang on, John. You know, you're going to Browns because it tastes better, and I agree with you. I've always been a Rex fan all last year, all the year before. But this year, he has to make his game uh, uh, stepped up a notch, and I'm sure you uh, you agree with that. But, my God, what what do they want? What do the fans want from him last year? They wanted him to win it. But, you know, the first time into the Super Bowl, you're, that doesn't always happen. Hey, the Super Bowl okay, was a disaster. Can do it. Uh, and, not, and, you know, it's, it's great. It's almost Bears time. The Bears' offensive game plan for the Super Bowl sucked, and their defensive uh, uh, coordination sucked. And yep. uh, Rex was right in the middle, and, and partly his fault also. But it was Turner, Rivera, and Lovey as much as anybody. I'll stand by that. John, you're going to go visit Browns, okay, buddy? Thanks, Murph. Uh, a great one. My, my pleasure. Let's slide in one or two final beefers, such as uh, Robin Woodstock. Hello, Rob. Hey, Murph. How are you doing today? Oh, great. Uh, a wonderful piece in the Sunday Tribune real estate travel about your wonderful community, Woodstock, there with the, the downtown square. You can take the train there and visit. You probably don't want too many Chicagoans coming up and visiting you, but I do it every once in a while. I love Woodstock. Ah, they're always welcome. Hey, my beef is with the Cubs pitching staff. It's been going on all year long. It seems like any time the Cubs score a run, the very next inning, the pitching staff either comes in and gives up one or two more runs, and it's been killing momentum all season long. So Rob, Cubs- this is great. You know what? I have a note here. I was going to maybe ask John Dewan one of these weeks to rank all the teams, you know, Sox, Cubs, everybody, because I agree with you. You watch a ball game and nothing tears your heart out more, and it seems like it's happening a lot at Clark and Addison is what you're saying. I agree. Where, you know, one that you score, then they score back, or they score and you don't. And the Sox, you know, I think we're going to run those numbers because you raise a good point, Rob. 
No, run them, run them. I'd love to hear what they are. <laughs> All right, buddy. Hey, thanks, Rob. Thank you. All right, pal. And uh, I haven't heard from, you know what? Stu hasn't called me in a long, long time. Well, I get to say, what's your beef, Stu? Let's go to West Chicago. Stroganoff. Stroganoff, I say, is on the phone. What's your beef, Stroganoff? Hey, Murph, how are you? Good, at Stroganoff. Right, what's your beef? <laughs> hey, uh, my beef is with the Sox organization. How can you think about giving Ozzy Gian an extension? I understand we won the World Series a couple years ago. We had to live in them now. We're 20 games under 500. Kenny Williams, he's another one. He shouldn't get an extension as well. It's like, How can you keep on bringing back the same team? For 20 games under 500. You know what, Stroganoff? I, I, I don't believe at all what th- these reports. Not that uh, Joe Colley or the other guys have misinformation or don't have it right, but to me, it would be a public relations disaster for Jerry Reinsdorf, at least now, to announce anybody's getting extended from anything with the way the Sox fans are feeling right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I just don't understand it, and I just hope they, uh, you know, I don't think it, there's any other people thing going after Ozzy Guillen. He's still got one year left. Let him see how next year goes and go from there. Exactly right. Hey, good beef. Stroganoff, you're going to go to Browns, courtesy of Murph. Hang on, okay, buddy? Thanks. Uh, Stu never calls me anymore, but Stroganoff does. Hey, go visit Browns for lunch. It tastes better. And those jumbo buffalo wings are flying off the shelves of Browns. Thanks for participating in What's Your Beef. Join Murph for another edition of What's Your Beef. What's Your Beef has been brought to you by Brown's Chicken Sandwiches and Catering. All winners of the Mike Murphy Show are only eligible to win prizes once in a 60-day period.